drugs. And so once that started, then that's when the declines hit. And then I got injured when I, uh, in college as well. I didn't play any pro football. I played semi-pro for one year. Uh, shout out to the Capital City Cobras in Sacramento. Hey, Sacramento. Uh, <laughs> <Sanctown. laughs> yeah. Then became a bartender. Uh, couldn't handle I did, and I became an accountant after college at a defensing company. Uh, didn't want to didn't want to just sit around all day because you know I got that a- athletic body. I might have a white collar mind, but I got a blue collar body, <laughs> and so that's why I joined the military and uh, and did four years in the army. Spent some time over in Korea, came back, still had that drug addiction in me. Um, Got away, went, on, went in timeout, had to do some prison time because of my bad behavior. Uh, and all this time, you know, going through four marriages. After those marriages, um, after the prison time, I got out and said, okay, I'm still here. I'm 40 years old. What am I going to do with myself? And like I said, one thing led to another. I got a job at a gym. And I, well, I got the job at the gym as a front desk person because I wanted the, a free membership. And uh, so I just... The guy looked at me and said, dude, don't you want to be a trainer? I go, man, I've never trained anyone in my life. He said, yeah, but if Granny walks in and needs help with the equipment, can you help her? I go, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I know my way around. Mm-hmm. One thing led to another. I'm getting my certification. I'm starting my own business. Um, I've always been musically inclined. I played my piano, played piano for my church growing up in uh, Tucson and, uh, so I learned how to play the piano by ear at first, and then I learned to taught myself to play in every key. Any musician would know what I mean. You, when you can play in any key on the piano, you you doing something. And so, um, I, everywhere I go, I try to you know get connected to some church as a music minister. So now, right now, I'm a music minister of two churches here in in Leesburg, and uh, and doing my business. I'm also a health coach, uh, teaching people how to eat right. Um, because for many years, I tried to out-train bad eating habits, unsuccessfully, of course, because mm-hmm. you can't do it. So what I learned now, I teach as far as how teaching how to people how to, uh, it's 90% nutrition, 10% fitness. Um, so, and I've, I've coached over 100 people on this program. Uh, I've got about 100 people on my boot camp. I also do personal training. I'm a busy guy, dude. <laughs> yeah. And I love my life because my passion is music and fitness, and I was able to combine them together. That's why I call my boot camp boot camp party because I choreographed the workouts. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so dude, yeah. the more that I listen to you talk, the more that it's like your life story, your approach is just so much aligned with the positive mindset. And the positive right response is about you know transforming all of life's experiences into usable yes. fuel for personal and professional success. And what that really means yes. to me is like, okay, whatever happened, whatever happened, whatever's going to happen, you can turn that into a way to be successful, even if it's maybe something at the time that was not super pleasant, but it, it, it can help you move forward. It doesn't necessarily have to drag you back. So, man, I'm just getting super pumped up about listening to you, brother. <laughs> yeah, yes, man. Letters. Thank you. Yes, I use all the experiences that I, all the experiences, the bad ones, I use them to help other people through them. I can't have empathy for somebody going through something if I have never been through it myself. So I understand why I had to go through what I went through and I wouldn't change it for the world because I see how I can impact my children, my community, and anybody who, who, who may need some help. Yeah, man, that's dope, brother. Um, all right, so if you had to just, I mean, it sounds to me like from what you're saying, Dion, is that there were several factors, several things that help you get on the right, get, get you back on, the, on going in, in that positive direction. But if you had to whittle it up, if you had to whittle it down to one thing that was like the, the, the key, one key factor that was instrumental in getting you get, getting going back in a positive direction, what would you say that w- that is? Oh, wow. You know, Chris, it's, it's actually two. There's, there's gratitude for being able to um, just be here still through it all. And then there's a certain amount of humility. Um, I'm very humbled that I'm able to be here today because I never thought I'd make it this far. 
So gratitude and humility um, that keeps me going and, and keeps me, what should I say, balanced and level mm -hmm. and, and, and keeping my proper perspective of who I am and, and why I'm here. Yeah. Gratitude and humility, key to success. Yes, sir. Said, <laughs> said by the man Dion Jergo. <laughs> I love you, man. Yeah. Love you, man. Love you so much, man. You, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I can't see the positive players, but I know they're grooving off you, and I know we're going to hear plenty back from them that they loved you, so so thank you for being here. Um, so so yeah. next one, it, to me, it's a really big one, an important one, and I think that you might have touched on it already. But talk to me. Do you use do you use, do you use visualization? Hmm. Visualization. I, I I I'm trying to I'm trying to sit here and see that I do. I do visualize every morning when I'm in meditation. I visualize situations. I visualize. Um, what I want to do during each day. Um, um, and then that comes through, you know, constant routine. What I visualize, I do. What, what I do, I visualize. So it, it works back and forth for me. Um, consciously, I don't, I don't know, but I know that I, because I, I, can't, I can't see it, I can't be it. So I guess I must use visualization. That was that, that was a good, very good question. I have to think about that. Um, visual, obviously, I do. Yeah. Um, but I've had to come up with the routines that I come up with um, through visualization. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. What I visualize, I do. What I do, I visualize. If I can't see it, I can't be it. That's awesome, man. That's pretty, pretty yeah. that's a good answer right there. Um, so, you know, one of the things, Dion, as we were growing up back in the day that I noticed about you, and this is this was just my perception and my perspective on you, one of the things that I really enjoyed about you, one way that you really affected me was, I mean, granted, you were an elite athlete, of course. So, so okay, but besides that, though, one thing that I that I that I saw about you that that really helped me was, it felt like you had this confidence about every and you know you you I mean like you said before you were baseball basketball football you know I saw you doing all that and it always seemed wait did you play for the Orange in in, uh, in little league you're the, on the Orange team right? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, you were. On uh, I played junior. I don't know. You mean uh, on football on the no, city league? No, no, no. In in little league at Kennedy Park. Oh, baseball. Yes, yes. The little brothers plastering. Yeah, you were on the orange team, brother. So I remember. And you were on the what? You were on the green team. I was on the green team, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you were. On, I don't know. You were. It wasn't Sam Pizza. Sam Pizza was the red team. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I used to love to play against the red team because they always had pizza after the game for for the exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay, I, I gotta break it down. Yeah, so you know, so like I would see you right, but and you had this confidence about you. But what I loved about your style of confidence was it wasn't necessarily cocky, like you thought you were better than everybody else. But to me, it felt more like you just had a belief in your athletic abilities and that and that that self belief translated to on the court on the field to me to, from my perspective like that that really gave you the edge and so it so in times that I felt like my confidence got dinged I'm like well my man Dion Jergo that's part of why to me he's so he's so great and why his his uh his athletic ability is a step above all the rest of us so talk to us about confidence you know, I remember being, um, it's funny you should ask that. I remember always thinking, I don't care how big the guy across me was, I just believed I was better. Mm -hmm. I said, I can do, if you can do it, I can do it. <laughs> there was, it, it, it. I'm serious, I just had to believe. If any, anybody can do it, if anybody else can do it, I can do it too. I just had that feeling. My mother used to always say, we try to help you put something together. You go, no, I don't, I don't, I do it. <laughs> and, and that's, 
I remember when I was preparing to go into the military, I wanted to get in shape. And I thought, you know what? People run 26 miles. If they can run 26 miles, I can walk 26 miles. So I had I had a relative that lived over by Sorrell High School. Now, you remember where Sorrell High School is, right? Way out there. I would go spend the night over at that relative's house, and I'd walk from Sorrell to Troya. Damn. That's a walk, brother. <laughs> Yeah, that is a walk. That's a walk, ain't it? That's a walk. I would walk from. <laughs> so I had this belief that if anybody could do it, I'm human to like the next person. I believe I could do it. And so I was not afraid to compete and and, 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 and hurt my will, everybody. I don't know why, where it came from. It's just, it was just in me. Um, I don't know if my parents taught me that. Or uh, what? But I just walked on the field thing. I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So part- I'm glad you were able to pick that up. Yeah, and it it really helped me. So positosis players out there, you hear that? Like you know, Dion is talking about competing, like having that self belief. Man, this is awesome. Hey, so we're we're kind of winding we're we're winding down here a little bit to the end, but I do want to talk. To, I, I, there's one super important question that I want to pose to you next. Yes, sir. So yeah. you know, there, there there's some players out there that have reached out to me and that have have shared with me that maybe their mindset at the moment is not in that positive mindset. It's not there. It's someplace else, but it's certainly not there. So my question to you is for the positive players: How can somebody change? their mindset what are some tips to reset in their mindset you know i tell people always speak positive even if you don't believe it because your body believes what your mouth tells it mm-hmm. you've got to just speak it say it even if you don't believe that you can do something you just say it i can do this i can i can beat this I can, I can, I can, uh, I can do this presentation tomorrow. I can pass this test. You just say it. I can study hard. I can make it. I can train hard to be the best. You just say it. And what, what, what happens is action follows thinking, not vice versa. Say it and then go do it. Just say it. Say it to yourself. I don't care if you have to just say it like a mantra, right on the chalk, right on the mirror. Michael Jackson wrote on the mirror that he's going to, his next album was going to sell 100 million copies. But whatever you have to do, you got to tell yourself until you can believe it. But you, it, it starts, I, I, I believe this, power starts in the tongue. Because your mind will screw you up. Your mind, if you let your mind, I, I tell people, I don't go, I don't, I don't go inside my head without adult supervision. <laughs> it's just no. <laughs> no, I get a second opinion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, and, and read good books, read positive books, uh, read, you know, uh, listen to positive podcasts. Look for something positive around. Try to find anything positive. Um, but don't wallow in negativity because if you want to, I mean, it's so easy to, Chris. It is so easy. I see it all the time. People just come at you and then you can tell they're just dragging that cloud over their head. And I just, I combat it. I said, no, that's not the true story. That's not the finality. You're better than that. And I just start speaking positivity into them. And another thing you can do is speak positivity to other people. Encourage someone else. Yeah. Then it comes back on you. Yeah. You know, and Adina, especially as, as, as we're in the times, brother, that we're in right now as, as a planet, as you know, the, the whole globe, we've been, we've been going through some stuff all together. And, and there seems yeah. to be a tendency maybe not to focus on the positive. So I love these words. Power starts with the tongue. Action follows thinking. Read positive books. Yes. Oh, yes. Hey, look, hey, my man, you forgot the most important thing. They got to tune into the Positosis podcast, baby. Come on now. Yes, yes right. Come, Come, on now. Come into the Positosis <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we forget. Yes. <laughs> tune into the Positosis. I love that word. Did you come up with that word? I did, my man. And so, so you know, I just. I figured you did. So, you know, like. Wow. What I was, it all came when I was thinking about like how did I learn all the things that I love? Like I love to swim, I love to surf, I love to play basketball, and I was always thinking like how did I really learn that? And and I learned it from positosis. I learned from going to the park, playing ball with dudes like you. You know, basically just through osmosis. And so 
I was thinking about being yeah. positive, so it kind of rhymes together. So that's how that came together. So I was like, you know what? I'm